Welcome back to Ask a Capuchin, where we answer questions about the Capuchin way of life and the Catholic faith. Today's first question comes from Sergio Gomez. He asks, what do you enjoy most about being a Capuchin? One of the things I really liked about St. Francis of Assisi was that he brought the gospel to all people from all walks of life. When I was first discerning my vocation, I visited the Diocesan Seminary in St. Louis. And part of my discernment involved the fact that most of my life was going to be spent in a parish environment, with different groups, meetings, making sure the school was running, finances. And that was not, not really appealing to me. I'm, I'm glad some people do it, but it wasn't really appealing to me. And so what I love most about being a Capuchin is the interactions that I have with all kinds of different types of people. So on a particular day, I might find myself hearing confessions in a prison. I could find myself celebrating Mass with a group from Fellowship of Catholic University students at a local campus. I could be working with high school students in youth ministry. Um, so there's just an incredible variety of people that I get to meet on a day-to-day -day basis. I think that has to be one of my favorite things about, about being a Capuchin. Our second question comes from Edward Dybul. I'm sorry if I massacred your name. How important is the Liturgy of the Hours to your prayer lives? The word liturgy comes from a Latin word meaning public. public it was the public work. Uh, similar today, we would say uh, the, the road crew who are fixing a road are doing the public work. And so liturgy is the public prayer of the church. And so the liturgy of the hours extends the gift and the grace of the Mass into, the, the, into our daily lives. And so for everyone, it's a very important prayer, but especially for priests and religious, it should be an integral part of their day-to-day their -day life. And so... As friars, we're committed and vowed and bound to pray the entire liturgy of the office. And so we begin with the invitatory, we have morning prayer, uh, we do midday prayer, uh, evening prayer, and then at night we do night prayer. And then people move around the office of readings depending on the house schedule or the friar's preference. But we do the entire liturgy of the hours and it's just a way of, ex of praying always, as, as Jesus said, and extending that grace that we receive in the Mass throughout our entire 24-hour uh, day. Uh, the third question comes from Luis Santino, and it's kind of a combination question with the next one, so I'll try to combine these two. He says, how do you find strength for, this, for living celibacy? And the next question says, is, if Adam and Eve were told by God to be fruitful and multiply, then does that mean that God consecrated virgins, including priests, nuns, and all religious, are performing a kind of martyrdom in some sense? Mankind is given the good of life, but martyrs give up the good of life for the sake of the kingdom. Similarly, sex is a good which the celibate give up for the sake of the kingdom. It's a long question with many parts. I'll try to answer it as best I can in, in a simple way. Marriage is a good and a gift. And because of our sexual complementarity, men are ordinarily attracted to women and women are ordinarily attracted to men. And so when you become a priest or a religious, you deal with the reality that you're going to be giving up and sacrificing something. That doesn't mean that when you're... Uh, discerning priesthood and religious life, you don't feel a strong call and attraction to marriage. You do, because for men, women are beautiful and vice versa. And so, in, in saying that we, we give something up, we sacrifice something very true. In fact, I won't say who, but one of our friars likes to say uh, often to us, I didn't give up a beautiful woman to come live here with you guys. I gave up a beautiful woman in order to give my life to Jesus. And so in kind of an older language, maybe used before the Second Vatican Council, Religious were called the Brides of Christ, and priests were married to the church. I think that theology is still true, but we don't often use that language anymore. And that means that we give up one thing in order to totally commit ourselves to another. And so as a religious, as a priest, we are totally giving ourselves over to a one-on-one -on -one relationship with Jesus. Now this necessarily means that we're going to have to sacrifice the good of marriage in order to do that. And how do we deal with that? So people will tell you, well, go for a jog, take a cold shower, uh, eat graham crackers, one of our older friars used to say. Uh, maybe those things have some merit. But ultimately what it comes down to is a willingness to suffer. Because no matter whether you're a priest or a religious, you're still going to have the natural human attraction to the opposite sex. And so on certain uh, days, that's going to be stronger than others. And the best way to realize to deal with that that I found in my life is to embrace the cross to suffer through it, to offer that as a sacrifice to God. And in that sense, it is a kind of living martyrdom that we go through. Um, but celibacy also is a great gift because it provides us uh, the opportunity for a unique intimacy with Christ and His Blessed Mother that we wouldn't be able to have if our 
primary obligation was wife and children. And so celibacy, while it is sometimes a sacrifice and a suffering, it's also an incredible gift which allows us to be fruitful, not in having children, but in bearing new disciples for Christ. Thanks for watching Ask a Capuchin. If you like this video, please make sure to like it, share it, and comment any questions you might have about the Capuchin life and the Catholic faith below. Thank you.